Hello. Give uh, Facebook a minute to kind of catch up and let everybody know that I'm here. Hopefully you can hear me with no problem. All right. Uh, hopefully it's not blurry. I know this was not scheduled, but it was promised. So I figured I would hop on on my day off when I knew I wasn't gonna get interrupted. But I can't promise you that we won't get interrupted at all because they're working on the roof. So we have a little bit of a loud noise sometimes overhead. But I figured I would give you guys uh, a little while to digest everything that was in um, the free live event that we did last week, last Tuesday, almost a week ago and get over Mother's Day. And then I would give you some tips and tricks that I like to teach. Um, I am by no means an expert, but it's just some stuff that I've learned over um, the years while practicing myself and teaching others. I like easy. So anything that I can do to make my life easier, I will do. Okay, a couple of things that um, I know some of it was recommended, some of it wasn't, but gloves, okay? I highly, highly, highly recommend gloves. Um, it really, even with the tape on the rulers, gloves to me just help you grasp your ruler a little bit better, a little bit easier. So if you can stand the gloves or if you've had issues without using gloves with the rulers moving and shifting, get yourself a pair of gloves and try them. I really, really like them. Okay, um, another thing, and I go over this in class all the time, kangaroo arms, okay? You know, that's like this. You can't do ruler work with kangaroo arms, okay? You need to be higher above your table. So if your machine and table are on a table and not set into a cabinet, think about a um, office chair that can go higher and up, go up a little bit higher. Um, I have some class chairs in here that we actually stack and we'll stack a couple of table, a couple of chairs on top of each other just to get you above your table higher. So you're looking down and your arms, you've got more control. Cause if you're trying to do it like this, it's just not gonna work, okay? Um, rulers and quilting, okay? Top stitch 9014 are, Almost always, and I'm not going to say always because everybody's machine is different. It depends on what's, you know, sometimes when you're working with different threads, it behaves differently. But I almost always use 9014 Top Stitch. And the brand that I like the most and I actually sell in the shop are Superior. They're titanium. I love them. If you're having issues with your stitching, it's kind of um, like a checklist. You got to go through and you rule out what's wrong. First thing I would do is check your needles and make sure you have the correct needle. I have no idea why I can't, you know, I'm not an expert. I can't tell you the technical reason, but whenever I'm using rulers, if you use, you know, a quilting ruler, a quilting needle, it may, may, but more than likely will give you issues with your stitches if you do not have the correct needles. Um, what else, what else can I tell you? Okay, we'll start there and then we'll go on. I'm gonna switch the camera because I promised to give you um, my tips and tricks for um, setting your foot, okay? Uh, where it is okay all right and if you guys have any questions about anything that i'm posting just put it in facebook and and i will get back to you if if you're not on when i'm doing the video okay all right so 
And I do this for every quilt sandwich, literally every quilt sandwich. Uh, one other tip, I found that um, for beginners, superior poly blend select batting really is um, a great batting when you're in the beginning because it will help hide any little blips and bumps and problems that you may have um, with your stitching. I don't know what it is. I think it's just the density of it. Um, I like it better than cotton. Cotton to me uh, is a little bit, and I'm sorry, I'm doing all the ums because I'm doing this on the fly people. So cotton for me, especially some of the thinner cottons, they're too heavy, too thin. They don't give you that little bit of extra density that will really help you hide a few mistakes here and there. Um, let me just change my bobbin. Now I'm using black on pink, which I probably never would in a million years, but for, video, for the purpose of the video, I wanted to do something that is gonna show up and that you will be able to see. Well, so that is why I'm using these colors. In the beginning, I highly recommend you use thread that will match the fabric that you're quilting on. Again, we're just trying to hide any little bumps or issues that you might have in the beginning. In the beginning, it's a huge learning curve. And if you want it to look good, even if you have a few bumps and divots and everything else, then you know, give yourself the best options to succeed. Okay, every single quilt sandwich that you have, you're going to have to test this because thicknesses of fabric, th thicknesses of batting are different. What you want, and mine is very, very loose, okay? I hope you can see this. I hope it's close enough for you to see it. All I'm doing is, before I even tighten it up, is putting my quilt sandwich underneath and putting my foot down. That's it, that's all I'm doing. I'm not trying to adjust it with my finger. I am letting the quilt sandwich and gravity do the work for me. And what I'm gonna do is right there, right where it is, I can still move it. My feed dogs are down and I can move it pretty well without any issues, we're gonna try it. I might have to adjust it, but so far this has been one of the easiest ways that I know to actually get your foot at the right adjustment. So not all machines are gonna be this easy, but we can try. If nothing to lose, and if this works for you, then guess what? You got an easy way to do your foot height every single time. And this really does make a huge difference. If your foot height is not accurate, or where it needs to be, I should say, um, you could run into a whole bunch of issues with your stitching. Sometimes, some machines I have found, just doing the needle up and down doesn't necessarily work really well. There are some machines that you have to physically put the needle down. And once you get your bobbin thread up, I like to put all of my threads to the bottom, just so they're out of the way. Okay, now let's just test it. I think it's actually gonna work out just fine with my pipe. Okay. Something that they did not go over really a lot during um, during the video, which to me is super important. It's one of the easiest things, or it's one of the number one lessons that I try to get people to learn. Speed, okay, the speed of your machine. If you're lucky enough to have a machine that has a speed control on it, start playing with it go like to the medium spot. I wouldn't go super, super low because everybody thinks that super slow, it makes you 
easier for you to do free motion quilting, but it doesn't, okay? I would try medium. You've got to figure out what speed works for what speed your hands are going. And if sometimes if you go too low or too slow, you will get really large stitches because your hands are moving faster than the needle is. So you want to kind of get into that middle ground. Whatever that speed is, you need to, that's like one of the number one learn, lessons to learn and figure out. Because if you're like me, I can't walk down the street and chew gum at the same time without falling flat on my face, which means free motion quilting up until, I don't know, three or four years ago, was very difficult for me because I can't get my head, my hands and my feet to all work together. When I figured out what the speed was and I could set my speed on my machine, that meant I could put the pedal to the metal and pretend I'm at the Daytona and just forget about speed. Eventually, the more you quilt, do free motion quilting, whether it's rulers or not, your speed of your machine will go up faster and faster the more experience you get. But in the beginning, that's probably your number one lesson to learn. If you can learn that, you're taking one part of the equation of your head, your hands, and your feet out, and you don't have to think about it, which also helps with the rulers, because if you can get your speed down, the rulers help take another part of the equation out, and the rest of it is easy. Um, so that's my big number one lesson. All right, so my speed is actually pretty good. I tend to do a little bit smaller stitch. Um, Almost there. Pretty good. I think it's good. All right. I'm just going to cut my thread. Normally, you would not do that. Uh, you would you know, give yourself a long enough tail so that you can not your and fish them through your threads and fish them through so that you're not they do not come undone all right let's try something one of my other tips okay if you've gotten the sample set of rulers you've gotten or any of these type of spinifex rulers they have a hole in them and that is for your tack so that your tack can go through and you can literally spin it. Now, when you have the glide, and by the way, speaking of glide, I use the grid glide. And I tell people in my store to get the grid glide first rather than spend an extra money on the um, free motion glide. Reason being is the grid glide has a larger opening here and it can stay on your table and your machine all the time. Whereas the free motion glide only has a small round hole that would fit your, your ruler foot. And you have to pick it up every time you wanna do regular sewing or anything else. If the grid glide is enough for you to have enough of a, of a glide, hence the grid glide name, um, it just serves the purpose and gives you a double double work without having, or double use, I should say, without having to keep picking it up and taking it off. Now, up until oh, about a year ago, we used to take these pin, our pins, and I think, I mean, our tacks. Let me see if I have another one, because I think this one is tilted a little bit. It is. 
All right, give me a second. Let me go get um, another tab. And I'll be right back because I thought this one was good and it's not. Sorry about that. Oh, nothing like a bent tack. Okay. If I can get it off. Let me know if you guys have any questions or issues. Up until about a year ago, sorry for the interruption. It wouldn't be a normal video if I remembered everything. <laughs> Up until about a year ago, in order to use these spinifex, you would have to get the pin to go from the back to the front, and that's what you would use. Well, we would normally put it in from the front first, create our hole so we can see where we're going to put it in from the back, and then slip it in the back. Well, recently, well, not so recently, maybe about a year ago, um, one of the instructors at So Steady came up with a great idea, and I love it. And that is using RK tape, which is an embroidery tape. And I've taken it a couple of steps further because I just need to be more exact, and that's how my brain works. I also have, have been trying out um, painter's tape which is a little bit more reasonably priced and um, comes in a lot more sizes. Okay, so what I've done is I put a crosshair on my tape. Can you see the plus? And I did that so that I can put my pin in just like you would from the sticky side through and you can see through the tape too, which makes it really easy to see the cross here. Oh, it helps when you put it in straight. Kabibble. Let's try it again. This is one of the reasons why I wanted to try uh, that I've been playing with painter's tape because it's a little bit more reasonably priced. It will do basically the same thing and it doesn't give you the same, the residue, just like this one will not give you the residue. But like I said, it's a little bit better priced. So depending on how much you're gonna be working with it, it would be easier and better on the pockets. Okay, so let me just, let that dry the ink. See my plus and minus? Now, if you really wanted to, you could extend it as far as you want to the end of the tape, just to give you an idea of where your center is. And then I'm gonna use those lines to line up our center. Now, if you're doing this on a fabric, just testing and playing, obviously you don't need the plus, the, the crosshair, but if you're doing this on a quilt, you want that crosshair so that you can be as, as um, not exact, because I hate that word exact, but be as accurate as possible. When One of the reasons why I really like using the tape is because of 
um, long arms, you know, on your simple, on your regular machine. And it's happened a few times with a few people that I know. When you put the pin in from the bottom, it can get caught in your plate or on your grid glide or, and it just, sometimes it just doesn't want to move all the way. It doesn't want to spin like it should. And on the long arm, when you're dealing with a long arm, it's very hard sometimes to get that needle, that tack through where you want it to so that you can work with the long arm version of these rulers on the big machines. So the tape is like a lifesaver. I absolutely love it. I think it's the best idea. I'm telling you, I wish I could come up with these ideas. I'd probably be a millionaire. The other thing that I came up with and I found is these tack backings, you know, for like tie tacks and things like that. They're rubber. You can get them on the Amazon fairly cheap, but I love them for covering the tack. It helped keep it where it needs to be, still giving it plenty of room and to maneuver, but you don't get inadvertently scratched with the tack. The tack doesn't get in the way. Um, and if you want, I can supply a link for the ones that I picked up, but I love them and I use them on the long arm too. Okay, let's play. And we'll show you how easily this works. Again, I'm using black thread and black bobbin because I want you to be able to see it. And this chair is not as comfortable as I would like, but we're gonna give it a go. I like to be a little bit higher, but it's kind of hard when I've got the video here and everything else too. So all I'm doing is lining up my line here on my crosshair and I'm in my A position because all we are going to do is go from A all the way around to B and then stop and turn our ruler. Once you turn it, you're gonna be back in the A position automatically. All right, so let's go. This is probably one of my favorite rulers. Oops. Let's see. Sometimes the only problem with gloves is you end up having to take them on and off because when you're trying to get threads, it doesn't necessarily work with the gloves on. All right, sorry. You know, when you're trying to do this on video, it's always harder than when I'm actually working because you're not paying attention. <laughs> you just do it and it's always easier. When you're not on video. All right. Put my gloves back on. Now, the whole idea of holding, of uh, bringing the bobbin thread up is so you don't have a bird's nest underneath. And it's not, it's going to look nice on the back as much as it does on the front. So make sure you hold it. Give yourself a couple of extra stitches in the beginning to set your thread. And away we go. When you're working on a curve, you want to go a little bit slower so you don't slip stitches. When you get to the top or anywhere there's a point like this, you want to give an extra stitch or two because that'll stop your bobbin thread from pulling underneath and it'll give you a nice, crisp, clean point. Normally, I would never, like I said, use black thread like this because even though I teach, I still want to make it look as good as possible. And um, 
I am nowhere near an expert, I can tell you that. This is probably literally one of my more favorite rulers because I just love the look. And what I'm doing now is probably one of the more simple and common designs. But I want to show you a couple of other things that you can do with it. And the thread that I'm using today is Glide because I happen to love Glide. Um, I use it for embroidery. I use it for applique, decorative stitching. I, it works wonderfully on my long arm. And I think next week I'm going to try and do a quick video on the long arm with rollers. Maybe um, in the evening, only because I think next Monday we have our Kimberbell Summer Nights event, which means there's still some time for you to pick up your kit. And I can ship them too. Oh, see? I just decided to do a little. Pick up. Again, why I would not use black on pink. And you'll get faster with time and the more that you practice. Nice thing is you can, you've got a little indent at the A and the B, so you can actually fill your machine when you get to the right point to stop. what we got. Isn't that pretty? Now you know why I bought those little thing, those little tack backs. Oh, there it is. Because I was going to say I lose them a lot. But isn't it pretty? Hopefully you can see it. I love it. And then the tape comes off very, very simply. It's not going to leave residue there. Um, all right, let's take it a little bit further. So that is the very basic of designs. And what I want to do is, let's see. All right. You can leave the pin on it with no issues because I'm not done yet. And what I'm going to do is draw some more lines. So, what I've done is I've gone to my eight point 
grid grid and I'm just centering the pin in there making sure they line up with the lines that I've already made and then I'm just going to turn it because you have other points other lines on here so that you can do additional guidelines and I'm just going to do a couple now if you didn't want to do this for what I'm doing now you could because we've already got the basics Use the straight ruler it's a little bit harder with the pin there but not too much because what I want to do is let's say you weren't perfectly straight and I'll tell you right now I'm not perfectly straight all the time and especially on this one um, you can rather than go from the grid glide you can use the pin as one anchor point and go in the very center of the marks that you've already made because let's face it nobody is perfect okay if you use what you already have on here and just keep going it's going to look good trust me and i use friction pens for my marking um i know there's a lot of controversy out there as far as marks coming back i will say that if you use best press and start your fabric before you mark it, which I already have. I've never had an issue with the marks coming back ever. All right, I've got my marks. Mm -hmm. All right. I like this, uh, wheel work is probably one of my most favorite things to do. I love having fun with wool work. I, it's just, it's fun. Now, normally I would tie my knots and I do it very simply. I'll show you once real quick. Okay, so you're gonna cross them over just like you're doing sneakers. I'm gonna go once in the hole and twice in the hole and that's the only knot you need and then you would cut them evenly and with a hand pin a uh, hand stitching needle just fish them through for now just because this is just for demo purposes i am going to cut them i don't ever want to recommend this cutting your threads when you're working on an actual quilt because you will run the risk of your stitching coming undone it's not set all right let's have some more fun now uh you can start and go all the way around again just with, like we did on this uh the first set and all that's going to do is it's going to be a really pretty starburst with a lot of stitching but what i want to do is and show you is I want to not add more stitching in here. Sometimes you will find, depending on what the design is, that too much thread buildup and no matter what you do, it just doesn't look good. And it's a lot more difficult to hide. In that case, I recommend you know, working with a thinner thread, especially in the bobbin, that can help hide some of those issues, those build those up threads. So what I wanna do is show you one other cute and fun idea that you can do just to play with this design. So making sure I'm all set. And all I'm going to do, using the same design, is just use the tip, okay? Now, you're going to learn when it backtracking, you're going to get much better at it. It takes time.
but since we've already done the design, if I turn the ruler, and I'm just gonna end up tracing right over one of the designs that I've already done. And I didn't go down far enough, so we're gonna put the ruler back. Look at that. This is not gonna be perfect because it never is, especially when I'm trying to demo. Don't ask me, it always comes out worse than if I was just gonna do it. It could be the nerves, I don't know. Either that or if it's Murphy's Law, that whatever can happen will happen. But you'll get the idea. And when you practice, it's a lot of fun. Again, when you if you use the same thread as your background, it really does help. In the beginning, hide a whole multitude of sins. So we're gonna go back, we're backtracking. And if done correctly, like I said, it takes practice. Everybody's gotta practice. I'm not by any stretch of the imagination perfect, I'll tell you that. But the more you practice, the better you'll get. And the thread stitching, over stitch right now, is all gonna be on the outside, just every other spoke. Oh, my thread just decided to be a pain in the wall. Not quite sure why it's being a pain, but it is. I didn't go far enough, so I'm just going to put the roller back, go a few, few more. Few. You'll get the idea. The more you stitch with rulers or just free motion in general, the better you'll get with backtracking. In the beginning, or stitching in the ditch, whatever you want to call it, nobody is ever really good at it, including me. It takes time. But the more you do it, it's like anything else. You will get much better. There we go. Let me show you what this one looks like. Again, I am cutting my threads, but I'm telling you not to do that in when you're working on your actual quilt because it's not good. Check it out. Isn't that cute? Now you could when you get more comfortable, depending on how your skill is in uh, free motion quilting, you could, for instance, let's try this, how about this? Do um, a filler design in these smaller points, point, 
that we just made. You could do pebbles, you could do something as simple as lines. There is a lot you can do, but have fun. Just take a piece of fabric and the rulers that you currently own and have some fun. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I think, is I'm gonna use the line on my arc ruler here, right on my um, point right here to make sure that I'm gonna be at the same angle for each and I'm going to start a quarter of an inch from this stitch line. And the easiest way to do that is just your ruler foot up against that line and you're gonna be a quarter of an inch away or as close as you need to be. I like that, but just give you an idea. I'm kind of playing by ear, but that's the fun thing. And right now, I'm going to go around. Till I'm about a quarter of an inch away. Using the lines on my ruler, make sure I'm in the same angle. Now, if you don't want to use your ruler, that's fine too. Okay. So I love the look of pebbles. Unfortunately, I am terrible at little pebbles, but you could do something like this. Little, um, every other one that you just, we just did, just do a quick cross here. And that will make them stand out. It would be like, uh, Stitching your negative space, it'll make everything else pop in here. But that's it for what I have today. Just have fun, okay? This is not hard. It takes a little bit of getting used to the first few times because it's something new. But I'll tell you right now, for someone who has been quilting for a long time, I've never been good at free motion. Ever. And it until I figured out those few tips and tricks and then started working with rulers, now I love it. So don't be so hard on yourself and just try it. If you have any questions, comments, let me know. Um, other than that, I'm going to get out my day. I have a few more things to do. It's my day off. And then I got to go to a customer's house tonight. <laughs> so that's all I have. If you have any questions or comments or issues, let me know. Have a great day, everybody. I hope everybody had a wonderful Mother's Day yesterday, by the way. Bye.